Well, we'll do some woodland wildflowers today, and here it is uh, June 1st already, and the trillium are still in bloom. Uh, this is as late as I ever remember them still being white at the clearing. It's been such a cool spring. Uh, trillium, of course, is a plant of threes. Trillium, three petals, three green sepals behind the petals, three leaves. So it's a plant of threes. And in some places, it almost covers the forest floor uh, in Door County and at the clearing. They fade to pink uh, as they age, and people sometimes think it's a different trillium. It's the same one, just turns pink, so you get kind of two seasons of color. But here it is again, June 1st, and we still have trillium in full bloom at the clearing. This pretty, pretty in quotes, uh, blue flower is forget-me-not, which we do not want at the clearing. It's one of our main invasive plants, and I know a lot of people say, well, it's so pretty, and first rule of uh, many invasive plants is you have to get past pretty. And I tell people what is appropriate in someone's garden might not be appropriate in a woodland setting like the clearing, and this is our best example. It is a nice blue with a yellow center. Uh, it's a perennial, but doesn't live for many, many years, but it recedes prolifically. And this is an, an area near the campus that we started picking every blooming, uh, forget me not, every, every one we found every year. This was year eight. And it, there's much less in here, but there's still a, a seed bank in the ground, apparently, and they germinate. But we're trying to eliminate this in several areas at the clearing, ultimately uh, the whole property, which is a huge task. Uh, but we started here eight years ago, and uh, we have a volunteer crew coming tomorrow, actually, that's going to pick this area again, find all the ones that are still hanging on. And, and they don't all bloom at the same time. Some started blooming two weeks ago, and now we have this one just that wasn't in bloom last week is now blooming now. But this is forget-me-not, the pretty blue flower that uh, we don't want it to clearing, and a lot of people uh, don't understand that until we explain it, and then uh, they realize that what's good in their garden might not be good here. Forget me not. The yellow lady slippers have started blooming, and it's unusual to have them corresponding with white trillium still around uh, in bloom. Uh, usually they don't cross like that. But here we have one of uh, this beautiful, unusual kind of pouch-like flower with these twisted reddish or maroon striped sepals below, uh, below the petals and these really striking parallel veined uh, leaves. So this uh, is maybe the most spectacular, in, in many people's opinion, the most spectacular wildflower at the clearing and in Door County. Well, there are other uh, orchids in Door County too. This is the one that's native at the clearing, yellow ladies slipper. Here we have a uh, white baneberry, which is also called doll's eyes in bloom. And if you get your nose down in it, it smells like lemons. You pick it up in the woods sometimes too, but you have to get usually right next to it to pick up that scent, but it's a beautiful lemon scent. Uh, this almost fern-like foliage. Uh, these flowers will turn into white porcelain-like berries later in the season. Uh, they look like porcelain doll's eye. That's where it gets the name doll's eyes. And it is one of the few plants around here that is actually deadly poisonous. The, those fruit are deadly, so that's, you have to be careful in gardens when you have kids around. But it is a beautiful spring bloomer, nice foliage over the course of the season, and then that striking white porcelain-like fruit later in the season, doll's eyes or white baneberry. This little beauty is one of our native violets. It's hairy yellow violet, and we think of violets as being violet colored, and many of them are, shades of bluish purple and purple, but this one's yellow. There are also some white ones, so they're not all violet colored. This uh, is a little taller than our native wood violet, maybe three times taller. And again, this striking yellow flower. I don't know for sure why it's called hairy yellow violet. I'm not sure when it comes out. 
There's a lot of fuzz on the bud or on the developing leaves. These don't look, well, they're a little hairy in the bottom. That might be where the name comes from, but it's a yellow violet, which seems like a, an oxymoron, but here it is. This little beauty is uh, called Canada Mayflower with this little cluster of white flowers. Uh, this terminal cluster or inflorescence, a group of flowers is called an inflorescence. Just a couple leaves usually. This one is a little taller than usually. It's three leaves. They're often half this height. It's in the lily family. Uh, these flowers will develop a little uh, red berry later. That different creatures, birds and chipmunks and squirrels, I suppose, eat and spread around. But it's a pretty little thing. It's easy to miss because uh, it's so short and it has these tiny flowers. But it's a wonderful uh, spring wildflower in the north, uh, Canada Mayflower. Well, this isn't a wildflower, but I can't help showing it. It's right along the road here. This is maidenhair fern, uh, just about fully expanded now. Uh, very delicate fern, very fine textured. A lot of people, including me, would call this their favorite fern. Uh, it's got these tiny kind of leaflets along this frond, uh, often in a, arranged in a kind of a C shape, and the stem is almost black. So it's a striking uh, contrast between the color of the stem and the color of the foliage. But this is uh, this great little patch of maidenhair fern. This is bellwort, the last of it. It's just about done. In fact, they're going to seed already. Here's a little seed pod that will develop from that flower. They hang down almost like they're wilting, but they're, that's just how they are. Uh, called bellwort, uh, perfoliate bellwort, because the condition of the stem coming right up through the leaf, that condition is called being perfoliate. So perfoliate bellwort. And the best name is, is Mary Bells. I like that one. It's also called occasionally wild oats. I have no idea why. But here it is at the end of its bloom time. And it loves it right along the road. It tolerates that disturbance and compaction, all that gravel. Here we have uh, wood betony, B-E-T-O-N-Y also called lousewort, and I've heard two reasons for that. If the cows graze in it, they get lice. And conversely, if you stuff your bedding with the foliage, you won't get lice. So I'm not sure which one is true, if either of them is true. Here it is in full bloom, this, this kind of loose cluster or inflorescence of these yellow with a little maroon in some of them, you probably can't tell kind of turtle head shaped flowers. Uh, so it's, you know, not terribly showy, but really interesting. You have to kind of look for things sometimes. The foliage is almost like a fern. People think it's, when this isn't here, when the flower, when the inflorescence isn't there, they assume it's a fern. It's not, it's a broadleaf plant. And in the spring, when it first emerges from the ground, it's often kind of a lavender color and can also turn that color in the fall as the weather cools. So it's got some fall, spring and fall color too. But full bloom is very interesting. Wood betony or lousewort. 